I am Brian Zipsy, and as always, I have the outstanding pleasure of being joined by my co-host to the East Coast, that's Matt Shipman. How are you today, Matt? I am good, Brian, and before we get into this week's show, I, I have to thank the bunch of people uh, at Belmont Park uh, on Friday and Saturday that stopped and said hello. They said to me, Matt, you always say, if you see me at the track, say hello. And a few of them said that. So I really want to thank you for saying hello. Uh, it makes me and Brian feel really good about uh, doing the show because we do the show for you guys. Yeah, that's nice, Matt. I'm glad you had a good weekend at Belmont Park, and I'm glad you got to meet some new or some old, as it may be. Yeah. Of course, that are watchers. All right, let's let's throw up the cover, boy. For those watching today, you can see that's the big gray, the son of Arrogate, Archangelo winning the Beaumont Stakes. There's Javi Castellano winning his second of uh, three Triple Crown races. He got his first derby this year, his first Belmont. So good for Javier Castellano. Good for Jenna Antonucci, Matt. She became the first trainer, female trainer, to win a Triple Crown race. Yeah, there were a lot of feel-good stories out of uh, the weekend. And like you said, for Javi, uh, uh, making a really nice comeback from uh, being at the top of the game uh, and getting back up there. And to Jenna Antonucci, uh, a trainer that doesn't have a lot of horses, hasn't had a lot of big horses, hasn't had a lot of stakes winners. Um, what a wonderful happening and, you know, Horse racing uh, has its problems, but more than a lot of things, uh, women have a lot of chances in horse racing. It was a great story all the way around. Great story again for Cody's Wish. Speaking of Archangelo and Cody's Wish, Matt, I thought this would be a good uh, time post Triple Crown to talk about who we think are best, the best horses out there so far. And the Triple Crown didn't really answer a whole lot for us. Uh, but I want to talk about we're both NTRA uh, weekly voters on their poll, uh, their top 10 poll. And I want to talk about who we have up near the top. So without further ado, let's show our these are the top three year olds. And, and you can tell it didn't show a lot because Matt and I have some uh, serious differences there, including the number one spot. Matt, you went with Forte, who was a horse who didn't win any of the triple crown races. Yeah. I mean, you know, I think we have some little differences. We've got, you know, we've got four, our top four horses are all the same, just a little switch arounds in uh, spots. Yeah. It, 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 it's tough with the three-year-olds this year because nobody has dominated different winner in each of the triple crown races. Um, I guess looking at body of work um, uh, and, and, with Forte, I gave him the number one spot. It is very easy when you're a voter in these polls to to get caught up in recency. I do it sometimes because I think it's the best thing to do. But I guess body of work, I put Forte on top. But uh, lots of respect for uh, number two and three. Number two, three, four, five, six, seven. We could go way down the list. I mean, there are very good horses not on this list. The Preakness winner is not on either of our top fives. Angel of Empire is not on our top fives. Hit Show, uh, Disarm, the list goes on. Arabian Lion, people are high on lately. But these are our top fives. I went with Archangelo, and, and I, I feel like his body of work as, as a three-year-old is quite good now with three wins in a row. He's coming off uh, greatest stakes wins at uh, one turn and two turns. He beat a very good horse in the Peter Pan. He's the only horse in the Triple Crown not who ran in the Triple Crown not to lose any of them. So I have Archangelo <laughs> on top. Uh, Forte, though, if you ask me who's still the best three-year-old male in the country, I'd probably lean towards Forte. So we have them in the one-two spots. A lot of people still have Mage on top, the Kentucky Derby winner who ran a decent race in the Freakness. Yeah, I'm. I'm sorry. You know, I. I. You got to have respect for the horse that uh, uh, won uh, the Kentucky Derby, the most prestigious race in the country. But uh, for me, I, I put him a little bit farther down. He lost to Forte twice, um, and came back in the Preakness to finish third in in a very weak running of that race. Yeah, weak running, but on the other hand, I also felt like the pace was totally against him in the Preakness, so I still have Mage 3. We both give a lot of respect to two fills, a horse I root for 
uh, two Phils, of course, who won big in uh, Turfway's uh, Jeff Ruby and then ran a bang up Kentucky Derby to stick around on that hot pace and finish second behind Mage. You have the Philly in the number five spot. Yeah, I have a tendency when I vote in the poll to uh, give recognize, recognition to uh, the Phillies and mares. Um, I, I do it frequently. I also, you know, um, uh, will vote for a three-year-old in, in the top thoroughbred poll also a little bit earlier on than others. Uh, hey, Pretty Mischievous has been extremely impressive uh, in her last two grade one victories, the Kentucky Oaks, and then coming right back to win impressively in the acorn. Yeah. And I don't know if impressive is the word I would use, but consistent certainly for pretty mischievous. She's been really good since she began her career, uh, last summer in Kentucky, pretty mischievous, uh, deserves the top spot among the Phillies. She's in my top 10. She's the only three-year-old filly in my top three-year-old top 10 off those wins in the Kentucky Oaks and the Acorn. But I'm not so impressed with her math that I, I feel like the three-year-old filly division is over, but she's certainly piling up the credentials. I still have Practical Move, uh, who uh, is two for two in graded stakes and beat horses uh, like National Treasure out there in California. So I still think Practical Move can be a mover and shaker. And two for two, that's uh, saying a lot in this division right now so those are our top three-year-olds matt i don't know about you but for me the choice in all horses top 10 for the ntr poll was less uh difficult to decide who to put on top there i i did not hesitate in my number one and i see we have the same number one in our all horse top thoroughbred top 10. yeah i i Agree with you, Brian. Uh, no hesitation whatsoever. Cody's wish is way, 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 way the top thoroughbred, the top older thoroughbred. Um, he is just on a roll and keeps winning and keeps winning. I was w watching the the Met Mile, and as the race was running, Cody's wish was uh, in last place, well back in last place, and then sort of in a blink of an eye. Uh, uh, so much that the you know uh, the, Tom Durkin was back uh, calling the races uh, for the Fox broadcast. He didn't even have time to catch him, and and he was on the lead so quickly. Um, it was a really impressive uh, performance once again for his, Cody's wish. Filling out the rest of the top ten for the top thoroughbreds wasn't nearly as easy. Yeah, that's true. Uh, and getting back to Cody's wish real quick, Matt, uh, I, I think he is uh, the best horse in America. And I, I think he's proven that now over especially the last uh, six to eight months uh, winning these grade one races. It was I, I don't want to compare him to a Hall of Famer, but I'm going to go ahead and do it anyway, because what I saw in the Met Mile reminded me a little bit of a of a mare. Uh, of a mare who often didn't run on dirt, but the look of that big horse just gobbling them up on the outside and all of a sudden going from uh, pretty far back to right there at the head of the stretch was very Zenyatta-like for me. Cody's Wish, uh, that that's putting Cody's Wish in some great company, but Cody's Wish really is a monster, at least at a mile. We'll see. I think the most likely spot for him next is the nine furlong Whitney, grade one at Saratoga. So it'll be interesting to see how he can fare at two turns, although he did win the Breeders' Cup Dirt Mile, which was at two turns last year. Yeah, the, the rest of the list, Matt, uh, wow, we have some differences there. I, I went with number two up to the mark. I just think he's been the best turf horse in America, and it's starting to become uh, pretty clear, at least on the male side, that he is a dominant turf horse right now. Yeah, no doubt about it, and, and he is uh, in my top ten, probably uh, down in the uh, in the sixth spot, um, again, with the ranking of the top thoroughbreds, uh, you know, I, I kind of keep in mind where the the dirt horses are compared to the turf horses. And, yeah, up to the marks, last two, he he backed up his last uh, his first grade one win with another really excellent uh, performance at Belmont Park. Um, I have defunded in the number two spot, clearly the top horse older horse in california uh with a couple of nice victories in recent starts but uh, uh before that 
a good run um, in the uh, Pegasus World Cup and another very good run in the big cap. Yeah, I, I was actually surprised you have to fund it that high. Uh, the funded is a, I, I agree with you, it's the best holder thing going in California right now, but I'm not sure how much that's saying for me, at least. Uh, number three for you, I see is rattle and roll. And this is a horse who's just been cleaning up great three races. I'm not sure where he fits with the best older horses in the country, but uh, a really nice horse. Yeah, I'm not so sure either. We will find out, but certainly on a roll in his last three races. Yeah, I, I think you called that a rattle and roll, Matt. He's, <laughs> he, he's rolling a late. Uh, I have elite power, and I was surprised that you didn't have elite power higher on your list because his race over in Saudi Arabia was uh, pretty awesome. The the sprint champion, of course, from last year, and he looked good on uh, the Belmont Stakes Festival as well. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, Brian. And, and I guess, you know, I, he is another one who is in, in my top 10. Uh, it's just that he's in the sprinting division. Yeah, yeah, he's in sprinting division. It'll be interesting to see if Bill Mott can keep Elite Power and Cody Swish separated, but uh, the grade one forego possibly could be a meeting between the two Mott superstars. Speaking of superstars, Matt, I was so impressed with what Clarier did more than ever in a, a illustrious career. What's becoming an illustrious career for the uh, well-bred stone straight Philly Clarier, I should say, Mayor Clarier, uh, so close in the last two Breeders' Cup distaffs. What she did to win that race, the Ogden Phipps, her second in a row, really impressed me. Yeah, and so close to winning an Eclipse Award the last couple of years. I think a finalist each of the years. And uh, the Stone Street and Steve Asmus and team has kind of made it a goal to get that Eclipse Award for Clarier uh, this year. And, I, you know, I don't know, uh, Brian, I don't think there's anybody who gets older horses and has them to continue running and has them getting better and better than Steve Asmussen does. Yeah, Asmussen certainly good at it, Matt. And Clarier is better than ever overcoming a slow pace to win her second straight grade one race of the year. We have a couple of turf horses uh, and then the rest of the list. You're number four, my number five. Two horses who are best kind of at those middle distances in Italian. If you let her get the lead in any sort of easy way, the race is over. Yeah, and she has been doing that an awful lot lately, Brian. There's something that I that I really like. You know, most times turf races are uh, are won by horses from making late runs and coming from off the pace. So I I, I kind of get a thrill out of seeing this front runner uh, go to the lead and dare them to to come and catch her, and they haven't been able to do that. Yeah, the just a game was a uh, a monster performance for that uh, speedy turf filly. Uh, my number five is kind of unusual. I don't think a lot of people will have him there. But if I'm thinking of the best horses that have run in America, Modern Games is on the list. He went over to Europe and won a big race uh, since being beaten at Keeneland. So his only race in America, he's lost. But again, I just think he's one of the best horses that's run in America. And we know he will be back for trainer Charlie Appleby later in the year matt all right that's our uh, look at the first half of the season if you will we also have a couple stakes races to look at today matt unfortunately they didn't come up with some big field but there are some big names good night olive being one of them uh, here's the better roses seven furlongs at belmont park on saturday matt good night olive looks like a pretty big favorite yes yes brian a big favorite and deservedly so a big favorite uh she had an absolutely fantastic season last year. It's a small field, Brian, but you know what? It's a pretty darn good field because these five uh, horses have uh, close to 30 wins between them. Oh, absolutely, Matt. Yeah, they're not all short fields are bad races. Uh, I'm not sure this is the greatest betting race in the world, but this is, the, this is a really good female sprint race because I think you have the best female sprinter in the country. Good night, Olive, who had a seven race winning streak, uh, stopped last time. And, and stopped is a good word, Matt, because she was pinned in, uh, blocked. She had no room. I, I, I'm not sure I've seen a horse, a, a really good horse in, in a big race, go off as a heavy favorite and have a tougher trip than she did last time in the Derby City Distaff. Yeah, no question. Everybody can become a trip handicapper watching that race. Yeah, good night, Olive. Just had no shot. And the horse that pinned her in, 
behind the winner, uh, Matt Araya, was Wicked Halo. And Wicked Halo is another really nice sprinter. Matt, what has she done wrong in her 13 race career? The great daughter of Gunrunner keeps running big races and actually third to uh, uh, Goodnight Ob last year as a three-year-old snapped a winning streak of her own there. And, and she beat Goodnight Ob last time. So this is the rubber match in their third meeting. Yes, absolutely, Brian. Uh, and, and you mentioned her record, uh, 13 starts, seven wins, Brian, uh, one second and four thirds. So hitting the board almost uh, every time for Steve Asmussen. Yeah, I, I don't know that Wicked Halo's ever run a bad race. Oh, there's the time form U.S. pace projector coming up, Matt. And you see that uh, in this five horse field, uh, they're saying the guy uh, will be on the lead. And that makes a a lot of sense, I guess, coming off a big allowance win in the slop. But there you see Good Night Olive, the one, the three, Wicked Halo. And we could probably start talking about Carmel Swirl because this Go Dolphin runner, Matt, is another very good female sprinter. Yeah, absolutely, Brian, with a, with a really nice win uh, in the Vagrancy, a grade three at Belmont uh, uh, recently, a nice win by uh, two and a half lengths and and last year uh she was a good runner also um she ran was second in the grade one ballerina last year yeah and, and you know what carmel swirl you know she was a, a talented horse who only ran two races last year she missed a lot of time last year and yeah. one of those two races as you say was the grade one second behind good night olive in the grade one ballerina at Saratoga. So Carmel Swirl is a very interesting horse. She's now had two races back. She likes Belmont Park, and she's coming off a nice win in the vagrancy. Uh, the horse that she beat was actually favored in the vagrancy, Matt. That's Dr. B, and Dr. B finished last year off in style, uh, was second last time, probably without the best trip behind Carmel Swirl in that vagrancy. Yeah, that, uh, uh, that Dr. B trained by uh, Butch Reed, uh, comes up from uh, Parks. You mentioned last year she was a winner in the grade three go for Wand, and she's finished first or second in her last six races. Yeah, a nice sprinter as one of the long shots, as is Beguine, who, uh, who has some talent. She ran a big race in the fantasy last year as a three-year-old, and uh, she won by just about 10 lengths last time in a sloppy allowance at Belmont Park. So, uh, yeah, a, a pretty loaded field for a five-horse field in the Bed of Roses. That's the Bed of Roses, Matt. Now we can go to, let's shift gears from Belmont Park all the way over to Churchill. Uh, nope, not Churchill Downs. What am I saying? It's <laughs> it's it's Ellis Park. Uh, I, I shouldn't laugh because Churchill Downs certainly has had their share of uh, misfortune and troubles. But uh, we're running at Alice Park right here now, and uh, there's some very good races. Disarm, Extra Anejo, uh, both looked good in winning last weekend at Alice Park. And this weekend, we have some of the best three-year-old fillies. Now, Matt, I said that I'm not 100% sure Pretty Mischievous is the best three-year-old filly in the country. She is, as far as what she's done so far this year. But there's some fillies in this Monomoy girl that could still challenge her. In fact, the favorite for the Kentucky Oaks is the number one. Uh, she's back after finishing fourth in the Kentucky Oaks. That's uh, wet paint. Wet paint from the uh, Brad Cox barn, as you mentioned, fourth in the Kentucky Oaks. But before that, heading into the Oaks, she had won three races in a row at Oak Lawn Park, uh, including the Honey Bee and the, the Fantasy Stakes. Um, yeah, this is another, you know, a uh, small field. It's not even a graded stakes race, but has drawn a graded stakes race quality field. Yeah, this will be a graded stakes race next year, Matt. I'm pretty sure of it because this is a uh, graded stakes field. Even the horses that are lower on the list here are interesting at the very least. But wet paint, yeah, I saw her uh, down in person down, down in Hot Springs, Arkansas. She dominated at Oakland Park in three stakes down there coming from behind. Fast track, wet track, it didn't matter to the daughter of blame. Uh, the Kentucky Oaks, she rallied. You know, it was a 14-horse field. She ran a pretty good race, but down on the rails, she just couldn't kick it in enough late, beaten less than three lengths by Pretty Mischievous, so it wasn't a bad spot. Now she comes to Ellis Park as a clear favorite, Matt, but she's uh, in a race that's only a mile, and there's not a lot of speed in here. 
Yes, absolutely, Brian. But, you know, like you said, it's uh, uh, it's a good field. It's a good field. And uh, let's take a look at the time form U.S. pace projector, Matt, because we'll see wet paint on the rail and well off the lead. You also see the pace projector here uh, marks this as a race that favors horses on or near the lead. So in other words, they're not expecting it a fast pace and they're expecting it to be pretty comfortable up on the front end which really could help the horse who's listed on the front here number four who's your filly who's your filly for me it's been a big disappointment this year she finished uh, a well-beaten third and fourth in a couple of graded stakes down in new orleans for trainer tom amos after being just an absolutely wonderful two-year-old filly uh, based at uh, based in louisville and running at churchill downs last year uh, but her last one, which was at Pimlico on Preakness weekend, the Black Eyed Susan, Matt, the day before the Preakness, I thought she ran a very good race. She led all the way in that Black Eyed Susan until the uh, mid-stretch when she was passed by tax. Uh, but it was a good second and an improved performance getting away from fairgrounds. Yeah, maybe. And and I was going to bring that up. Maybe that's just what it was. Maybe that the surface at fairgrounds was not to her liking because she – uh, in two grade threes there, she was third and she was fourth for a filly that trainer Tom Amos, who's won over 3,000 races, um, was talking about being one of the best horses that he has ever trained. And 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 he's had some good ones. So maybe the second in the Black Eyed Susan is an indication that it maybe it was the fairgrounds or maybe Tom Amos figured out maybe there were some little things going on with her. But uh, uh, it seems like he's got Hoosier Philly turned the corner and, and ready to run the way she was last year. But it's a question mark, and, and Wet Paint is a very good horse. Yeah, Wet Paint is a very good horse who, again, was the favorite in the Kentucky Oaks, the most uh, prestigious real Philly race in, in the country. So Wet Paint is to be respected here but yeah i'm i'm looking at who's your philly too uh she was so good all three of those races were at churchill downs last year so there might be a horse for course kind of thing with who's your philly but i like what you said about turning the corner because certainly her performance last time in the black eyed susan was an improvement uh there are some other fillies in here that are interesting sabra tough ran a good race in the breeders cup last year the breeders cup juvenile philly she she came from way back in a big field to be fourth uh, she's only had one start this year and she ran into some, some very very fast fillies was beaten less than five lengths in that eight bells uh stretching out to a, a, a mile here sabra tough if she can improve off that performance is another one to consider yeah dallas stewart horses sometimes are a little hard to read uh obviously this uh, this filly is talented because she was a debut winner, came out and won in her first start at Churchill Downs and then was second in the debutante, which put her on a, you know, a, a tough series of races because after that, you know, after that debut maiden, when uh, she raced excu exclusively in graded states. Yeah. Yeah. This is, uh, this is her first race, uh, not against graded stakes. Although, like we said, it really is a graded stakes. Uh, on Saturday at Ellis Park. Sabra Tuff, an interesting horse. As is Champagne Calling, who uh, uh, ha has had maybe her ups and downs, was beaten in her lone stakes try, but uh, she's coming off a determined allowance win that I, I liked at Churchill Downs last time. Yeah, for a, a talented uh, trainer in Ian Wilkes, as we know, who doesn't isn't always in the limelight, but uh, uh, give him a talented horse and he's dangerous. Yeah, and, and another talented horse in here might be Never Tell Patty, who... Uh, showed some flashes in a couple of races, in her first couple of races. Uh, she wasn't beaten all that bad in those maiden races, but they were both on the all-weather surface up at Turfway Park. Her first dirt out dirt was a mile at Churchill Downs. It was only a maiden race, but it was an impressive win for Never Tell Patty. Yes, for uh, Kentucky Derby winning trainer Eric Reed of Rich Strike fame. Yeah, never, never tell Patty uh, one for one on dirt, and and it looked good. So I would not throw her out either in this Monomoy Monomoy girl. Flamin looks like the long shot of the field. Matt, um, she's coming off a couple uh, of wins in a row, though. Yeah, and uh, one of them was at Keeneland in a very high price uh, uh, claiming race, and she's got a couple of uh, allowance wins. So uh, a nice horse. 
Yeah, yeah. And, and she's the outsider of the field, frankly. But uh, again, just like the Better Roses, kind of a compact but a good solid field over at Ellis Park for the Monomoy girl. All right, Matt, that's uh, that's our two race previews. Uh, the the, the Philly, Phillies and Mares have the spotlight this weekend for, for the Horse Center fans. Let's give our top picks, though, and I, I want you to go first. We can start where we started with the Better, better Roses out at Belmont Park. Yeah, uh, uh, in the bed of roses, hey, uh, certainly uh, uh, Goodnight Olive is the horse to beat. Goodnight Olive is a very, very obvious choice, should win the race um, after that bad trip. Um, but I'm going to take a little shot uh, with uh, Wicked Halo. Yeah, Wicked Halo is a nice mare, a nice sprint mare. It's not out of the realm of the possibility that the, the best two or three sprint mares in the country are in this bed of roses. But much like I said about Cody's wish in the Met Mile, there are times to go with the favorite and there are times to go against the favorite. This is not one of those times for me to go against the favorite. I think uh, seven furlongs at Belmont Park, just like a mile at Belmont Park was right up Cody's wish. This is tailor made for good night, Olive. And I, I kind of expect her to put on a show. So I'm on the chalk in the better roses. How about the Monomoy girl, Matt? Are we both on the chalk there? I don't think so. I think we're both taking a shot against wet paint. Um, as we saw in the pace projector from time form, uh, putting who's your Philly on the lead. I think that means that she's got a pace advantage in here and could get to the lead. And if in fact she's back to being the kind of horse that she was last year she might be tough to catch yeah there's no doubt that wet paint has been the best uh horse that's in this modern boy field uh girl field this year but hoosier philly has a lot of that class and if she can run back to that race uh four weeks ago in the black eyed susan where she gets out there and she's uh, able to set the pace and kind of control the race i think she'll be awfully tough as well one mile might be a little short for wet paint. So Matt and I are going with Hoosier Philly in a mild upset in the Monomoy Girl. All right, Matt, I feel like we covered a whole bunch in a short amount of time here this week on Horse Center. I uh, uh, hope our fans enjoyed it. Let, let me get a parting shot from you, my friend. Hey, the Triple Crown is behind us, Brian, and we head into summer racing. Uh, Monmouth Park is open, and they've got their preview for the Haskell Stakes. So we got big races coming up in the summer, like the Haskell. You mentioned the Whitney and the Woodward and the Travers. So, uh, and the mid-major uh, three-year-old races will start popping up uh, in the summer, also. Yeah, well, they already did, Matt. The uh, Disarm won a nice edition of the Matt Win at Ellis Park on Saturday. So there you go. Uh, I think we got the Ohio Derby coming up too, but before you know it, folks, Saratoga and Del Mar. I think that's what Matt was really alluding to will be open. I want to thank you as always, as uh, Matt said, he uh, really enjoyed seeing that meeting a lot of you out at Belmont Park this weekend. So uh, we appreciate you watching. Thanks for sticking with us. We love to do the show and hopefully it shows uh, special thanks to Candace Curtis for the great race graphics, Derby Wars, the best contest site out there, our sponsor. And of course, we can't forget time for US for their pace projectors that we use in handicapping these races. Folks, next week we'll be uh, right back here again on Horse Center. I, I think we'll be in different places next week uh, or the next couple of weeks, Matt. But Horse Center is always here for you, folks. We'll see you next week. I think we have the Ohio Derby to look forward to. We'll see you then right here on Horse Center.